Hey everyone, glad to be here at Secure AI Summit. Looking forward to our session, Elevate Cloud Threat Hunting with AI. Maya and I are excited to be here with you today. So we're going to uh, focus on using generative and predictive AI techniques in our threat hunting flows, our threat hunting steps, improving and optimizing response times, improving um, the mean time to detect by decreasing that time. Uh, and uh, I'm Kenny Peoples. I am a Red Hat principal architect and I enjoy working with technology and one of the things that I've been doing lately is working on my doctorate uh, with Kestrel and Kestrel as a service and looking at team threat hunting and trying to, to work on that meantime to detect. And I'm working on my doctorate at Colorado State University. And so I, I, the key takeaway from our session will be we have security operations centers, our SOCs, and we don't know the exact percentage, right? Because there's going to be uh, incidents where uh, the sophisticated threats happen. It could be 20%, it could be less, it could be more, we just don't know. So those security operations centers are going to catch certain um, um, issues. But we're focused on how can we look further and use AI um, to be able to do more. And um, so that's what our focus is going to be on and the uh, time that we have with you. So let's just jump in. All right, so our concepts and terminology for our project, Kestrel as a Service, I really like talking about this uh and diving in, if you'll notice in this graphic, we have the NIST cybersecurity framework and it shows the uh, govern, the uh, detect, respond, and uh, recover outcomes. Well, those are helping to discover and manage the incident, uh, but we wanna improve, which means decrease the MTTD, uh, which is the detection, the, the MTTC or containment and MTTR um, for repair. So some of the questions that we can ask, can we improve or decrease the detection to an adversary and minimize the impact? Well, yeah, we can because with Kestrel as a service, um, we've pulled together multiple open source projects so that um, uh, we have a scalable, persistent, and collaborative team threat hunting environment. And that's because they include Kestrel, the Open, um, I'm sorry, OpenC2, Stick Shifter, uh, Jupyter Hub, these associated uh, projects. So um, we can shift from being a single threat hunter to a team of threat hunters. Then we have our comparison of threat intelligence to threat hunting, I see the 20% of sophisticated threats as part of the um, threat hunting. This is where we have those possible threat indicators. Uh, we build hypothesis, and so those indicators can be IP addresses, strange IP addresses, unusual network traffic, but that can uh, do the trigger the investigation, what is the hypothesis, and find the resolution. So with Kestrel, this is a um, threat hunting language in runtime, um, but together that we've put in a container. And it's part of ARFL um, and DARPA research. Um, uh, it was built upon that research. Um, but the threat hunting language helps us accelerate that threat hunting, and it has a layer of abstraction for the reusable, composable, and shareable hunt flows. That's the key, is the collaboration capabilities. And this is at opencybersecurityalliance.org. And we want to hunt fast. We want to be able to um, 
tie all these together to crowd threat hunting, uh, pack hunting. And so there are three things that we don't want to do. We don't want to uh, uh, use the same TTP pattern across different data source queries. Uh, we want to make those um, more useful. Um, and we want to make sure that we're not writing one-time use adapters uh, for these hunt steps. We don't want to um, waste our scripts programs um, by writing and using them just once. We want them reusable. So we want to construct a hunt flow that has small reusable hunt flow steps. We want to share notebooks um, with the team, um, our hunt books. We want to get interactive feedback and revise hunt flows um, on the fly. So what does this mean? This means we have our language and that's for a human ex to express what to hunt. And we have our machine interpreter that is um, how to hunt. So that compiles what you've written and executes as the compiled code locally and run uh, remotely. So just a couple of key terms um, and all of this, you can go back and look through the websites, but we um, have um, our records, which are our logs, our entity, which is uh, process, file, IP, et cetera, hunt, the threat discovery procedure, hunt step, individual hunting operation, the hunt flow, business logic of a hunt, and a hunt book. Uh, so we're in a hunt book in Kestrel, uh, as a service and our Jupyter notebook so we can build and execute a hunt. And so we'll um, uh, go into development and deployment next. So now let's look at how we can deploy Kestrel uh, in a container and create a team threat hunting uh, environment as well. So first thing I want to note is we can see um, from the Open Cybersecurity Alliance uh, GitHub that we have our um, Kestrel Wing repository. I want to call this one out because if we go to containers and we look at Docker, uh, we have our Docker file so we can create our image. That image is also out on um, Docker Hub. I can just pull the container uh, and deploy uh, Kestrel, uh, the container. But I can also go over to our uh, other repos and there's Kestrel as a service. And within Kestrel as a service, I can go down and look at the uh, deployment scripts. And within my deployment scripts, uh, you can see that I can deploy a Minikube environment as well as a um, Kubernetes environment. So let's back over here real quick. So let's talk a little bit about uh, how I can do a container deployment. So I tested the image on Fedora Workstation with Podman. Um, this was in a, a virtual machine um, and I also tested um, through Podman desktop and that virtual machine as well as on uh, Windows 11. And so let me show that real quick on my uh, deployment within Podman um, desktop here. Gonna let me. So within my Podman desktop, just to call out a couple of things, if I go over to settings down here and I look at my registries, I did go ahead and sign in to Docker Hub. Probably be putting the container out and um, Quay as well. But I went over to um, my containers here 
and I can do a create. I can do an existing image and I can pull um, from my K people slash CAS baseline, which I did here. And of course I started it up. So uh, with that container, it is running here. Um, I can go over to the terminal and um, once I have that running, I can get this token and then I can um, browse over to my uh, 8080 and order, sorry, 8888, <laughs> just like, oops, just like it has here and I can enter that token. So uh, just a quick synopsis there. That just enables me to look and see um, how can I do the deployment. I can um, execute Podman and uh, then I can get the server list for that token. I can browse to it and sign on it. And I can use all the tutorials and we'll uh, highlight that in just a minute. But here with our Minikube deployment, I can also um, go to the repo uh, that I described on Open Cybersecurity Alliance. Um, in this case, I did a, uh, a, a deployment with Vagrant with VirtualBox so that it would create an Ansible controller. And from that Ansible controller, I could do my uh, deployment of Minikube and then deploy to Kubernetes uh, the Minikube um, dashboard and I could go to my uh, Jupyter Hub console and that allows me to start the Kestrel uh, Jupyter Notebook and I can run the tutorials through there as well. Um, the uh, scripts for um, deploying the full Kubernetes is also in that repo. And now when we look at how can I use our threat hunting notebook and um, I want to dive into looking closer at the uh, capabilities within our multi-user environment. So as you'll see on the left hand side uh, we have our development um, options. We have starting the container, uh, the Kestrel as a service container in Podman Desktop, Podman Docker. That's really for the single uh, user usage and um, getting familiar with the language. Then we have uh, what I mentioned, which was Minikube, where I have a test environment. It's uh, more for a small team and doing testing uh, with some of the capabilities with sharing a, a team, a threat hunting project. And then we go on to what uh, is a production environment. Uh, and that is a full Kubernetes cluster as well as to OpenShift with OpenShift AI. So those are our deployment options, but we also have our development on the right hand side. So those different repositories that are out on Open Cybersecurity Alliance and our image repositories, um, uh, which right now it's uh, Docker Hub. And I can point to that just to, to download the image and start it. Um, but if I go to Kestrel as a service, uh, we can do a full Kubernetes uh, deployment with Minikube, K8S, or uh, Red Hat OpenShift. And we can use some of the um, capabilities that we were discussing as a team. So in this case, I'm just going to show you uh, real quickly uh, what the environment um, looks like when I get into the Jupyter Notebook because I want to be able to show where you can get some tutorials of uh, the Kestrel language itself. In this case, I browsed um, to uh, my uh, Jupyter 
notebook instance uh, here I just wanted to show the container real quick we have our um, tutorial under the Kestrel language hunt book and tutorial uh, but I can um, start my own notebook or I can choose this uh, hello world and I can uh, start going down through um, basic terminology that I described before. I can start using um, uh, the Kestrel language and uh, as this has uh, using a new command to create an entity and a Kestrel variable, I can execute that and get my output. And then I can just keep going through um, the uh, Hello World. So if I go back to here, one thing I wanted to highlight, uh, this step is for um, the full Kubernetes uh, cluster, the, I'm sorry, the Minikube deployment. And um, when I go to or browse to uh, the 30,080 for that Jupyter Hub console and I sign on with one of the predefined usernames and passwords, I'll get um, that same screen that I was just showing you, um, be able to get to Kestrel. The, um, as I mentioned uh, previously, the goal is um, using the team threat hunting capabilities. So doing the Minikube deployment or the full K8S um, or OpenShift is what we want to do to, to show some of those capabilities. But you can go back through and do the deployment and look a little bit more at the Jupyter Hub configuration, um, which is a, a, a project that allows um, some of the team collaboration uh, with starting a notebook uh, that can be shared um, across a team. Okay. So, All right, so our concepts and terminology for our project, Kestrel as a Service, sorry. I really like talking about this uh, and diving in. Okay, so now on to the second part. Uh, so my name is Maya. I work at Red Hat in the Emerging Technology Security team. Uh, my background is in AI and ML, uh, but I'm interested in security, supply chain security, uh, and I recently joined also, um, I contributed to communities to enhance uh, AI supply chain security. Uh, I recently onboarded Kestrel um, with the help of Kenny to, with the goal to enhance the language with AI capabilities to uh, improve the Thread Hunter's experience with it. So now we're going to see how AI can use you, uh, can help you as a Thread Hunter uh, using Kestrel and enhance your experience. So why should you use AI uh, with Kestrel? Uh, simply to, as Kenny mentioned, to reduce the mean time to respond to an attack. So. Now we can assume that attackers will also use generative AI in particular to uh, enhance the, to improve the time they take to uh, attack a system. So we need to also counter the efforts from adversaries. So this is where AI will play an important role for us. So I'm going to do an overview of how AI can be used in particular in Kestrel analytics. Uh, so Kestrel analytics are a particular uh, kind of step, of uh, hunt step, sorry, uh, within a hunt book in Kestrel that provides uh, some kind of interface for hunters to uh, plug in, for example, uh, foreign language modules and uh, uh, for example, have uh, algorithm based on ML or other kind of deterministic algorithm to analyze data and uh, apply some kind of enrichment on the, on the data they have uh, during the hunt. 
So previous examples and efforts include things like, for example, uh, graph learning based lateral movement detections or k-min clustering on our Kestrel data. Uh, so you can see this example in the Kestrel Analytics repository uh, under the Open Cybersecurity Alliance organization on GitHub, if you're interested in knowing more. Uh, so I'm going to show a pretty easy example of how you can implement a Kestrel analytic to enhance uh, a hand flow. So here we are sourcing data from an external uh, data source on GitHub. And this data is um, made of thousands of processes of uh, non-interactive Windows shells. So here you can see that we get the data in the first um, handbook cell. Um, so you can see the output here with uh, all the information and the, so the different processes. And next we're going to apply, uh, to run the apply command in Kestrel, uh, which is um, one of the commands to use Kestrel analytics. Um, on the analytics we wrote, which is called OpenAI Suspicious Processes. Uh, it's a pretty simple one. I will show you how to write it later. Um, so you can see the prompt here, which says, uh, which says that, um, so asks ChatGPT uh, to rank the processes for you and give an explanation on why it ranked the processes this way and why the, like where does the suspiciousness of the processes come from for the, for the top 10? So you can see the answer below. Uh, so it will give you a full explanation on why, uh, so ChatGPT answered with this kind of ranking. Uh, so it's a pretty, I would say, a pretty, it's, it's a good advantage in terms of time. Uh, you don't want to go through 500 or thousands of processes yourself. So this is kind of um, helpful information to have. Um, so the analytics is pretty easy to write. Uh, you just need to provide uh, a Docker file uh, and an analytics.py uh, file. So here we write it in Python. Uh, so we select the GPT 3.5 Turbo model in this example. And then uh, here is the prompt which is hard coded for this very simple analytics. So uh, you ask ChatGPT to look into um, the data frame that contains the data we extracted earlier and uh, rank the processes by suspiciousness. Uh, and then you provide this analytics function um, that you can write, you see it's pretty easy as well. So you're just calling the ChatGPT uh, API um, and you ask it to output the, um, the answer in a formatted way. So this is pretty much how you write a Kestrel analytic. Um, I encourage you to try it yourself. It's very easy and um, you, can, you can try also with other kind of prompts. Uh, into the, in the future, we'd like to improve this um, interface with more flexibility for providing prompts. So for example, if you could provide it directly in the Jupyter notebook or handbook cell, uh, instead of having it art coded into an analytics. Um, and we also plan on starting work around uh, automatically initiating a hunt from an indicator of behavior. Um, but also outside of the analytical, like Kestrel analytics uh, space, we would like to um, start uh, working on an autocomplete feature for the Kestrel language. Uh, as you could see, for example, with uh, GitHub Copilot or other kind of uh, autocomplete for other languages. So thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, uh, let me know. Okay, no questions. Um, so I had a demo, uh, but it doesn't work, unfortunately. Oh, a lot of technical issues today. Yeah. Um, so we tried with a lot of different things. Um, but you can, you can really prompt anything. I mean, as long as you have the data, uh, you, can, you can ask for any kind of analysis. Uh, 
I don't know, you have suspicious processes, but you can you can ask for any other kind of suspiciousness ranking on uh, other kind of uh, of data on your system. Uh, it's it's pretty much like everything you can imagine. Yes. Did you did you try any other like security specific models? So you use like the generic chat GPT model, which it doesn't really know anything specifically about security. You haven't been trained on security topics in particular. Did you try any other like security specific models to see if you know any better than chat GPT? Um so when you refer to security specific models, uh what are you thinking about, for example? Like uh, no, we haven't, but actually it would be a good idea. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so no, we, we haven't tried, but it could be really interesting as well. Um, so is it risky to provide? Is it risky to conclude based upon that either limited set of data or unknown sort of un, you know, untrusted data? Um, so you, you talk, for example, uh, about the data we source in the, in the example from, so you can also provide your own data. So this was just an, one example, but if you have data of your own, then you can provide it and then I guess it's, uh, it's not such a risk. Is it, is it correct? Uh, yeah, I think because uh, I think when you are talking about NCPR, NCD, so you, you got to have very substantial amount of data and, and predictable behavior. And I'm just wondering how long it takes to reach there and if you reach at all. Because it is very risky to say, I mean, fix NCPR, NCD. Um, I, I don't think the goal here is to fix it, but it's just to, to enhance it. I mean, if, if we assume that attackers are going to use generative AI to uh, write attacks faster, then we need to counter uh, these efforts as well with generative AI. It seems like the logical solution, but I don't think the ultimate goal is to fix uh, these issues. Yes? Um, so I think this is about, um, so Kestrel Analytics is here to provide an interface for other modules. So for example, Python, which is not a Kestrel, like is, which is not Kestrel to, um, for example, an enrich data or uh, analyze data that is provided inside a Kestrel handbook. So this was the, the meaning of this. Yes, exactly. But you can plug any kind of model. Uh, you can write the analytics in Python. Um, I'm not sure if any other language is supported as of now. Um, but yes, that's pretty much the idea. Um, I am not sure yet because we haven't tried. Um, so I don't know, I can get back to you on this question later, but I don't know out of now. Any other questions? Okay, thank you very much.